if you get the absolute standard for journalism on Mike Madigan, get the house that Madigan built, and just an amazing piece of work from our guest, Ray Long. And when you open it, the song plays, Our House. <laughs> Ray Long joins us now. We'll talk about the tune in a second. How are you? And happy holidays. Thank you very much. Good to be here. Nice to have you back on. Investigative reporting for the Tribune forever. We appreciate the work you do. The house that Madigan built. Not a laugh riot, kids. But if you have somebody in the uh, family that loves Illinois and wants to know how politics got this way or has some interest in the Madigan story, especially with the trial coming up this spring, this is a book you need. Get it. And you know what I say, Ray? Get two copies. You're careless. You'll lose one. Or get three and give one away as a gift. Yeah. That's right, Jane. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it. All right, the Edberg trial. Where are we? How much longer? Well, you you called it a great time because last week was the centerpiece of the case. We had the issue of the old post office mm-hmm. come up, and that is the one in which Burke allegedly uh, sought to help the developers of the old post office cut through the red tape maze at City Hall if if they would show their appreciation in the form of uh, tossing some property tax work his way. That's uh, the famous tuna uh, where you've heard the call uh, over and over, I'm sure, where Burke uh, asks Danny Solis on tape. Do we have uh, the tuna? As a matter of fact, uh, here's the short version of it. So did we Can land we the, uh, the tuna? Have we landed the tuna? Yeah, that's it on the on the head right there, and um, that's one of the key points for prosecutors where Burke is reaching out to Solis to determine whether or not um, they had uh, received a green light from the developers that uh, Burke's firm, law firm, his private law firm, would get uh, property tax work from the developers in exchange for Burke, allegedly exchange, of course, for Burke uh, taking action to cut red tape and to deal with uh, some bumps in the road on Amtrak, which runs underneath uh, the old post office. So uh, he was willing to do that, but he said not only the tuna, but he said things like, you know, I haven't heard back from them, so I'm not motivated. These are the kinds of tapes that are really harmful to Ed Burke's case. But uh, his uh, lawyers have said uh, he, he didn't do anything wrong. What uh, Remind everybody, what's his legal exposure here? As far as, you know, if he were convicted, does he go to jail? Well, he could go to, to jail for as many as 20 years or so. I doubt it would be that long. But uh, those are uh, some of the maximum sentences. He's got 14 counts against him. Um, it's a racketeering case, which means there's a variety of, of issues. Some of the other issues that we've heard, of course, is that he tried to shake down uh, Burger King owner in his ward. This Burger King owner is from Texas, and uh, they, the prosecutors have alleged that uh, Burke didn't just want uh, to uh, get property tax work from that one Burger King, but he wanted uh, the business from the Burger King owners, hundreds of other area restaurants, wow. and uh, that uh, he even uh, had uh, the Burger King owners send a list of some 150 or so in the in the uh, Chicago area. So uh, that is another one of the uh, allegations that is a high point on the prosecutor's list. They've also gone through a couple others where Burke allegedly uh, threatened to hold up a fee increase at the Field Museum because uh, he did not get a response of any kind when he uh, put in uh, his support for a, an internship, a paid internship for the daughter of former alderman Terry Gabinski, um, and he uh, stunned some of the field museum officials when he uh, raised that as an issue and allegedly tied the two together. The other one is in court right now, uh, folks, where we have uh, an issue miles away from Burke's ward. It, it deals with a a permit fight that was uh, dealing with another developer who wanted to put up a 
a pole, a 30-foot pole with a sign that advertised one of the, the clients in the shopping center, and that was Benny's Beverage Depot. <laughs> so these are it all, kind never of all Chicago it's, all it's the nuts. time. It's nuts, yeah. It's yeah. What do they uh, expect to wrap this whole trial? It's four, we're in four weeks. Yeah, we're in. Uh, we're coming into the fourth week here. Uh, it got delayed a week because of a COVID issue. One of the lawyers had COVID, so we uh, slowed it down and didn't uh, work for a week there. But um, they're looking to finish it before Christmas. Uh, the big question now hanging is: Will the defense carry out their threat to bring on? Uh, Danny Solis, the former alderman turned government mole, and uh, put him up for a withering cross-examination. Is it too late for the prosecution, or I should say for the defense, to offer the prosecution a deal? Well, they could. They could still do that uh, up to any time, but uh, the clock is certainly ticking on it, and I would guess that the longer it uh, gets and the closer it gets to the jury, uh, the harder that is to pull off. Um, Ed Burke is not a young man, um, and a couple of years in prison could amount to what could be a life sentence. The people you talk to um, talking about the stress he's under uh, or how he's handling this at all? Well, um, he still stays a pretty stoic and a cool customer, laughs occasionally uh, during funny parts of the of the. Uh, testimony. It's hard to believe that there is a funny part, or, but there are a few times. I've seen his ears turn red. You know, he kind of has kind of a pink complexion, mm-hmm. that Irish mm-hmm. complexion, and I've seen his ears turn red a few times when the uh, prosecution uh, brings out some of the, their uh, more damaging uh, testimony or evidence. But uh, he seems to be holding up uh, as best you can under the circumstances. His wife, uh, Ann Burke, the former Illinois uh, State Supreme Court Chief Justice, is there in the front row supporting him, as are several of his kids. So um, he's got family support, and he's got uh, big gun legal support, too. So he's uh, fighting it all the way. Um, the Madigan trial, as of now, the earliest it happens is when? April 1st. It looks like it's going to go that time, too. The judge intentionally set it further back than normal uh, so that they could get all their legal fights and legal briefs out of the way. So um, right now, from everything I've heard, it looks like that's on schedule to go on April 1. It's Ray Long. The house that Madigan built, read that. There's your pretrial primer. Yeah. We'll need you back on this story and more, of course. Thank you for what you do. Thanks, Ray. Good to be here, Steve and Jane. Thank you. I'll right, be well. There you go. Ray Long. So good. I got to get the cost to write a song. Tell me what you guys think of this. Ed Burke, the Red Ear Defendant. What do you think? <laughs> I like it so for far. The holidays? I like it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You got a couple of weeks left. That'll be work. There you go. I love it.